Greetings, this is DT with Interactive Homeschooling, and today I wanted to share with you our organization for our Earth Science curriculum this year, as well as our plan, pre-planned science kits. Um, for those who do not know us very well, we are year-round homeschoolers, and my children prefer hands-on learning. That means we don't use a lot of textbooks, and when we do use textbooks, we usually use them just for spines to pull out the important information, vocabulary, and things of that sort. Um, but I do not require that they read the textbooks themselves, okay? And I will share how it is that I assess whether or not they've learned the information, okay? But we are year-round homeschoolers. Um, we school in block schedules. That means that we typically school for five weeks on, and then we take one week off. During each of those blocks, we learn, we learn one topic. So we'll focus on one science topic during that block. During the week off is usually when I do a lot of the planning for the, very, for the next block. Um, that means each year we have, typically have about nine to 10 blocks of, um, that I can choose topics for. So this year we had a 10, 10 blocks and I've broken the year, the science curriculum up into um, those 10 blocks. Now, the base or the textbook that I did use um, for our science units is the Holt um, Earth Science. This is a full year middle school science curriculum. Now, again, like I said, I do not require that my children read the textbooks. If they want to read the textbook, that's fine. If not, they can find the information for each of the units and outside sources. Now, what do I do for each of the units? What I am going to do on each unit is to plan. And I went to, I'll put a link on the blog, but I go to the Donna, went to Donna Young and found a template to create a unit study. And so what I've done is for each of our topics, like this is for minerals and crystals. So that's going to be the first uh, or the second unit that they study. Um, what I've gone and done was to look up the different, look through my state and found all of the standards for minerals and crystals that were there for my children to learn and made a list of objectives that I would like for my children to meet dealing with minerals and crystals. Going from there, I've gathered materials. There's a section for materials for books and videos um, that you can get from the library, or maybe there's videos on Netflix um, that would go with minerals and crystals. And so I have those there. There may be some websites that were really good resources, so I've made sure to include those as well. Um, in the planning for the unit, I also have the vocabulary that I want my children to learn, um, any field trips that we'll go on, um, any type of projects that we will do, and memory work. Those are all pre-planned for each unit. So again, this is our second unit, which will be minerals and crystals. So this is for me to be organized for each unit, and I will do this for each unit. Now, on the, uh, what my children will receive, they do not get this. They will get a checklist. Now, this particular checklist is for plate tectonics. And this is what I give them at the beginning of each unit. And it has everything that I expect them to learn for that particular topic. So on this one, it'll have the vocabulary terms. It'll have um, things that I want them to be able to do, be able to explain the differences between convection and conduction and so forth. They'll be able to label the, the tectonic plates of the earth, um, being able to describe the co different types of mountains and how they're formed. So this is what I use to assess my child's learning. And they will get a, check a checklist like this for each unit that we do, okay? Now, the curriculum, like we said, is the Earth Science Curriculum by Holt. Um, one of the things that I liked about it is it came with this little video quiz. So the girls will be able to put this in the video, and for each of the chapters, it has little questions. So if we're studying um, rocks and minerals, then they'll be able to go to that particular chapter on rocks and minerals and um, answer the questions. So this is just something that they can do outside of the textbook. Another one of my favorite things that we keep 
for earth science was this little handy little questionnaire and it has little questions on side a and the children can use this as a self-study on their own it has little uh, vocabulary terms that they can answer or questions about earth science that they can answer as well one of the important things that we wanted to do this year was to increase our use. Um, the children have all been taking Spanish for a couple of years, and I wanted to make sure they were doing, um, incorporating our Spanish, our learning of Spanish into our other subjects. So we want to incorporate into our math, our science, and language arts as well. So I have lots of science readers that are in English and Spanish that have to do with with earth science this year so these would be on volcanoes and other types of natural disasters now this is an oldie for us but it's still one of our favorites if you can find these you can find them on amazon this on amazon or at a local school supply store they have these for all of your science topics so they have this for physical science life science and earth science they have them for different grade levels and ages um, so this is one of our favorite games to play, and it covers lots of material. So the children love to play this game. Now, what I've done this year that was a little different, typically, like I said, I would set up all of our labs and resources for each block the week prior when we would have that one week break. So this is our week off. We're coming up on our week off. But what I've decided to do was to go ahead and pre-assemble their labs for the year. And I wanted to do that because, again, this year I want to really focus on creating their um, interactive notebooking pieces. Typically, I would purchase them, uh, but this year I am not working, so I want to make sure that I can create those resources because they can become costly. Um, now, some of the things that we do are how I would set up a kit. These are some of our kits for this year. Um, one of the things, the first things that they'll be getting into is going to be rocks and minerals. So in this kit, what I have done was to gather our resources for a mineral lab. Okay, so I've taken some of our, our minerals that we have and organized them into little bags. And each bag has a number. And they will have a lab day for mineral identification. Now, what this does for me is to having these pre-assembled, I don't have to look for anything. There's nothing that I need to go out and purchase. Um, and I have these ready. So on lab day, I'm ready to pull these out and the children will be able to go through these identification labs. So these are all numbered. I have the answer keys already set aside in my, in my teacher's um, notebook but these are already available for them. In our mineral kit, they also have a set of minerals. These are already labeled. So they'll be using these as they study them, okay? I've done the same thing and set up a rock lab as well because that'll be after they study minerals, they will do the same thing with identif identifying rocks. So they will have that. They will build crystals or grow crystals. So those labs are pre-assembled for them. They will be studying weather and tornadoes. So all of these are set, this has been set aside as well. This is one of the, you just need plastic bottles and the little tornado funnel that you can, the tornado tube that you can get from a school supply store, usually about two bucks. We have the, the labs, when I try to put them together, I want them to have a variety of things. Um, so they're going to have prod labs that they're going to be um, completing. They will have um, diagrams that they will draw and I put together those tubes and things. So when they'll be drawing um, diagrams for the different types of plates um, of the earth. So the, this is for them to draw their diagrams of the divergent plates, um, the slip plates and things of that nature. So that's one other thing I want them to do. They will be modeling. So they this year they will be building models of the layers of the earth for the interior layers. So this is one of the modeling sections that they'll be doing. They will also be building um, dioramas. So I've pre-assembled everything for them. 
the diorama that I picked for them to do this year is going to be a volcano. So they will be building a, a diorama of a volcano showing the um, parts of the volcano this year. Um, but again, this is the entire year. So I've put everything into a box. They have labs covering everything from rocks, minerals, um, work, how tsunami works, how volcanoes work, um, tornadoes. They have um, labs on um, the rock cycle and a few other things, which we will show as the year progresses. I will post all of those labs and all of the resources for each of the individual labs as well in our uh, on our blog at www.interactivehomeschooling.blogspot.com. So all of those resources will be there. But we're going to try this out this year and see how this goes. I'm going to do the same thing for my other children. They, we have three different science topics going on this year. We have one with biology, one um, in physical science, and the two youngest in earth science. So hopefully this advanced preparation will make it run a little more smoothly and also give a little bit more time for the other things that we need to do. So again, I hope that this was helpful. Let us know what you think. Have a good day.